like, most of the issues that I have with Cosmic right now are, like, the way things feel, as opposed to just core functionality being missing. Like, the, the core... The core desktop is there, but I don't like the way that certain parts of the window management feel or window focus feel. Once that stuff gets resolved, I'm pretty much good. Like, I, like, I don't really care that there's not as much customization as KDE. I'm not a big, like, ricer. I don't really care about doing theming. I like a little bit of stuff as long as I can change, like, window border colors and window border sizes. But for the most part, I'm already pretty happy with it. KDE can be like, yeah. kind of overwhelming initially with like how many things you can change. Yeah, I'm someone that kind of runs the default um, right. when it comes to a lot of stuff. Like obviously, like switch to dark mode uh, sure. immediately. But like besides that, I'm pretty much someone that just kind of runs the default. I'm not really someone that is into rices as much. Mm -hmm. Like there's a reason why I'm not using Hyperland right now is because with KDE just kind of has everything I need just right there, and I have to go to a config file and set things up and. It's just there, and, and it's ready. Which is ironic, because I use the distro that is not that. <laughs> that you have to set up everything. Mm -hmm. But the desktop environment itself is, like, something where I just don't want to think about it. Just run it. Okay, does it run? Okay, we're good. I don't right. want to have to configure stuff even more. Especially if I'm, like... If I installed Hyperland as soon as I got Arch Linux installed, I would not be able to see it for a few more days, because I have to set up everything, you know? Mm -hmm. But now that I have, like, a rock-solid install, then I can branch and be like, okay, do I want a window manager? Probably not like KDE more. Do I want to get Cosmic? Do I want to do all these things? Because I have, like, a steady base. I can now do random bullshit, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, that's actually kind of how I was when I first switched to Linux. I swapped straight to i3. So, i3... <laughs> Its config is very, very bare. It's, like, enough mm. to open a launcher, enough to, like, go between workspaces and move windows around. That's it. You don't have a wallpaper. Yeah. So you just have, like, complete... If you don't have a bar set up, you have a completely black screen. <laughs> Which is, um... Yeah, a, a good start. I, like, I knew what I was getting mm. into, so it wasn't as big of a deal, but it did take me a little bit to get things to a point where... It was comfortable to use, and if you need mm. something working immediately, unless you're downloading an existing config file, a window ma uh, window manager is just not really the place for that. Uh, unless you know exactly like how to configure it, and like you sort of already know what to do with it. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, it's. I like Hyperland. Hyperland's fun, but like I I wouldn't recommend Hyperland to someone who is just starting out trying to work out, like, what they want from Linux. I, I would probably just put them on KDE or GNOME, probably KDE. Yeah. Maybe Cinnamon. Yeah, put them on, like, uh, with Cinnamon or uh, Pop! OS with GNOME, soon to be Cosmic? Yes. Um, Distros, on the other hand, like, I don't really know what exactly to really give someone, because, like, there are certain issues with, like, beginner distros that have their own faults there is no perfect entry level distro because like mm. linux mint exists but linux mint has some issues with flat packs and just management and stuff like that we have pop os pop os doesn't have cosmic yet mm. that's literally it it's still using gnome i don't want to recommend gnome we have nobara and i do like nobara i trade it on my laptop I even had a stream i mm. mean it's on nobara on my laptop don't like how they're handling the package manager i when i use kde one of the reasons i love kde mm -hmm. is they have the discover uh mm -hmm. app where it's an app store basically you can connect flat hub to install anything you want on the graphical user, user interface right but when you use the nobara themed kde and so the official install mm -hmm. it doesn't get included because it, according to rogue ren it apparently like screws up some uh some like dependencies with discover or whatever and, like the repos mm -hmm. um you use the the package manager the nobara package manager and my god it's really confusingly designed it's just a list of things there's no nice uh front end of things it's just here's a list figure it out and that's not really intuitive for me you know uh it's a package called yum x uh they, they've renamed Yum, it like, to Namara Package Manager, but it's actually called Yumx. 
Yeah, I didn't mean like um like like the Pac-Man equivalent. I mean like the App Store equivalent, if that makes sense. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see, I see. Um, wait, I'm wait. Actually, I might, I might be kind of confused. Hold up. So there's a thing on Nabara called the Nabara Package Manager. Yes. That is a renamed version of Yumex. Okay. Which is a sub... There's like four different packages... Okay, this is confusing. Like, there's there's a bunch of different forks of Yumex. This project has been around for a long time. I'm not even sure which... Like, what they're shipping. You probably just put in a VM and find out for yourself. <laughs> I could. I, I could do that. I'm not going to do it right now. Um, yeah, of course. It seems to be some sort of just general package manager GUI by the looks of it. Yeah. Okay. But like, sure. but like, I don't think that's really good for like beginners. Mm -hmm. I think a beginner distro should like have something that's like, dare I say, something that's a little bit more Windows Mac OS like in terms of like intuitive. It's not like literal design, you know, <laughs> where it's like, here is a nice GUI for this. Here's a nice GUI for that. Right, right. And then present the options of like, hey, if you want to get a little more technical, here's the terminal, mm -hmm. you know? Well, yeah, the, like, a good beginner distro has to have a balance of, like, GUIs, mm -hmm. and then have an option to branch out into more terminal-based stuff. It shouldn't just be all GUI or all terminal for a beginner. Well, now, for well, someone like me, who's used Linux for a little bit now, I can use terminal whenever I want. I can okay. use GUIs whenever right. I want. I'm more preform. But as someone like a grandma user who's like, I don't know how to use a computer, <laughs> then you'd probably want to give them, like, Ubuntu or something. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. Mint. Uh, from what I'm seeing with, like, Yumex here, it's basically, like, it's effectively a terminal application, but it's a GUI. It's just a big list of applications. Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, that's, uh... Yeah. There's no Discover app equivalent, and I don't like that. Yeah, I don't really... I've never really used one of the, like, the GUI uh, app installers actively. I've always just done things with Pac-Man. But I can understand yeah. the value in the for someone who, you know, wants something a bit more user-friendly from the start. I've always mm. just... Like, I, I switched to Linux when I was going through a programming degree. So it's kind of yeah. like I'm <laughs> in the mindset video. of doing things with the terminal anyway. Mm. That's one of the reasons why I probably won't ever switch from... Uh, Arch something else. I know um, one of your viewers, Apic Bang, is wanting to teach me NixOS. That's going to be interesting. But I like Arch a lot. Uh huh. You're probably thinking, uh, I have to do that NixOS video in two years. <laughs> yeah, I've been saying that for about two years already. Maybe more. Maybe we're at four. <laughs> It'd be 2028 when we get the NixOS video. One day, one day it might then. happen. I, I'm not making any promises about it. <laughs> <laughs> 